I'm going to speak with Sam Bennett, Ireland's newest Tour de France hero, in just a moment. But first, I've got to play you this. It's from WLRFM, the uh, local radio station down in Waterford. Their sports presenter, Nigel Kelly, was embedded at the Bennett House yesterday. Uh, a big day, and uh, once the intermediate sprint gave everybody a little bit of confidence and a little bit of calm, then he did catch up with the Irish superstar's mother, Helen, and captured the final moments of the dramatic stage. Quiet! No, no, Sam's dropped, he lost the wheel. Oh, he's out the wind. Your son has won the green jersey and he won it on the Champs Elysees, winning the sprint finish. What's that like? Surreal. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, uh, my voice is gone. <laughs> I'm pure and utter excited, yeah. static, and just so happy and so proud. So proud, you know, what can I say? I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, you know, this is Sam. Yeah. This is Sam up there. I can't believe it. And he's so well deserved to get where he is today. You know, I'm so, so happy for him. Has and it properly just, sunk in? No, actually, not at all. I think tonight, when everything kind of calms down a little bit, we'll probably just uh, put it on and watch it like I'm watching it for the yeah. first time yeah. and still cry <laughs> and still scream and shout and just, oh my God, it's just. I, don't, I, I think we'll wake up tomorrow morning and think and say to ourselves, did that just happen? <laughs> you know, and we just spoke with Sam there. He was in the back of a car and he's just turning the camera to the Eiffel Tower and Tara is in the back of the car with him and we're just chatting and we're just saying, can we believe this? You know, this is the ultimate. I actually can relax now for the races from now yeah. on in. I think I can just sit and look and say, oh, great, you know, enjoy the rest. Because up to now, oh my God, I was shattered, I was shattered. You know, I literally had lost my voice. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it's amazing, you know. And hopefully it'll get all the young kids back out on bikes again and, yeah. you know, and, and, and get the excitement of it going again. It'll be super, you know, and especially with the COVID and how bikes had become, had re a resurgence of cycling, that this again now will give it another boost up, another level. So that footage from WLR. Sam Bennett, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. Not too bad. Yourself? Have you watched that numerous times? Uh, I haven't. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, no. <laughs> Uh, the level of excitement in your front room and your uh, mum's front room was absolutely off the charts. In the middle of it, though, there's, oh, no, he's lost the wheel. Typical Irish pessimism, it's not going to happen. And then all of a sudden it does, and it's just an eruption of joy. What were you feeling? Uh, when I, when I rewatched it, or in the race? In the race, actually. Do you remember? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. The last before, I, I felt that there was a bit of a... Uh, the headwind was a bit too strong, so... When my teammates had me coming into the the corner and the last corner, and we were one two, I thought we were a bit too early, and uh, I was aware of uh, the other team there with two other riders, so I let them slot in, and for them to kick first and to to take a, a run at the the other sprinters' leadouts man's wheel, and uh, and then take a line uh, run for the line um, uh, very late. So uh, yeah, it was I uh, was it was a bit of a yeah, improvising. That's class. I didn't realise it. So the, in the middle of the race, the tactics are kind of off the charts. And when when do you realise that it's actually worked? Is it literally when you're crossing the line? Yeah, like even 50 metres to go, um, you know, you kind of hit your peak speed and uh, you're, you're just trying to hang on then. And um, yeah, I was just afraid that, that somebody was going to come past me. And uh, yeah, when I got to like, I think ten meters before the line. Then I knew I had it, and yeah, I couldn't believe it. Uh, it's it was an incredible sensation. Um, it's, it's something that I never thought I'd be able to do because it's it's often regarded as a, the the sprinters world championship, um, and it's even hard to get there because it's at the end of the Tour de France. So yeah, it was just it was it was an amazing feeling. <laughs>
There's a great photograph in one of the papers today of you just around the corner and you're on your own, but you're looking up at the big screen, watching the replay of the, the race finish. And we all got to see the interview that you did after your first stage win uh, a couple of weeks ago, it feels like now. And the bit there where you were kind of uncertain that you'd actually won, there was, you kind of had to have it confirmed to you a, a couple of different times as well. So it's just been this mad roller coaster for you for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, um, the first one was really emotional just because all the hard work and the years that were put in um, and it was just such a slow progression to get here um, and yeah, it was always a battle um, and then yeah, just I, I just couldn't believe it happened and then yeah, the, the, the picture where I'm looking at the big screen, it was like, <laughs> did this just happen? Um, and I was watching it, watching it again on the big screen and taking it in, and uh, yeah, it was it was awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but to be honest, uh, I just want to thank my whole team. Um, couldn't have done it without them. Throughout the whole race, they looked after me, got me through the mountains, got me within the time cuts each day. Um, and yeah, just it was, it was a real team effort as well. So uh, yeah, it was, it was a great few weeks. The day that you got green, it seemed was less emotional than the day you won the, the actual first stage for the first time in the Tour de France. Is that, is that true or were you just, they didn't capture that emotion as well as the post-race interview in the immediate aftermath of the victory? Well, you see, when, you, when I got the green, it was like, yeah, like I had, it, I had it then, but it was something that I was only holding for a few stages, and I didn't really think I had physical capacity to to carry it all the way through. Um, but then it wasn't until I actually had the jersey that it was like, oh, uh, maybe this is a a dream that I I, I didn't realize I had um, until I I put on that jersey, and then once I got a taste for it, I was like, oh, actually. I want this jersey, <laughs> and uh, so I fought really, really hard for it, and uh, it was a tight competition. Um, but uh, yeah, the emotion didn't come out for that because it was a, it was a slow burner because you're trying to defend it, you're racing the whole time through it. I, I lost it at one stage, got it back. Um, so so that was more kind of on the road, and then just just wearing it coming onto the Champs Elysees when we entered for the the, the first lap. I got goosebumps, you know, um, to, to be a sprinter um, wearing the green jersey coming into the final sprint and the Tour de France is something amazing. And then and then when I got the intermediate points, um, I think it was three laps to go and I knew I had the green jersey. Uh, that was a special moment, but it was within the race, so nobody really got to see that side of it and then i had to switch my focus again and go for the for, for the for the sprint so yeah the green jersey was maybe something i didn't get to celebrate until after the race that that's very interesting sam because uh, like it's one of the most famous theaters in sport the final day of the tour de france and i wondered if as a cyclist it just doesn't matter as much you're just focused on the task at hand but from the sound of things the idea of being on the champs elysees how famous this sporting piece of theatre you're right in the middle of that does really strike home with you as you mentioned those goosebumps there yeah like um and normally there's more crowds so you go in you just like the last time i did that i just remember the banging on the barriers and the roars and you can't even hear each other um it was a little bit more tame this year but it was still uh you get all these waves of emotions and um and it's often regarded as the the sprinters world championship um mm -hmm. And it's the one that every sprinter dreams of winning. Um, and it's something that I've watched years growing up, you know, like they, they had the camera angle at the side, uh, running alongside the peloton. So as a kid, I often watched that and replayed it and saw some of my heroes win that way. Um, and, you know, like I, I, I have won in other Grand Tours, so I was, I was, I was gradually getting confidence in that okay, maybe one day I could win a stage in the Tour de France, but I never thought that I could get that the Champs-Élysées, you know, that that was that was one really high up on the bucket list, and but I, I never thought I could get that, and that's a dream come true. And then, actually, to do it in the green jersey, that's just the icing on the cake. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. 
yeah, uh, it, I yeah, I don't know. It's, it's yeah, it's 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 an amazing sensation, and I, I just can't believe I got the opportunity to in my career to do this. <laughs> You mentioned coming down to Champs Elysees before, uh, like that would have been for Lantern Rouge, I presume, or, or am I forgetting a, a, another year the, yeah. in between? Then it, it, it's quite quite a turnaround, isn't it? It's like I, I, I mean, it's just one thing watching it as a kid and picturing yourself there. Is it almost harder to imagine as Lantern Rouge going down the home stretch of the Champs Elysees actually at the other end of the pack entirely? Yeah, I think um, it probably makes the win all the sweeter. Um, but the, the GC isn't something that I would ever, ever look at. Um, sure. I don't even know where I finished this year, to be honest. Actually, I really don't know my, my where I was in GC. Um, it's so like you kind of look at sprinters more as stage hunters, uh, if that makes sense. But, um, um, yeah, sorry, I'm not the losing train. Um, does it make but, it even uh, sweeter? Yeah, sorry. Um, but yeah, like the last time, yeah, I had a bad accident on the first stage and I just wanted to finish the Tour de France. So fighting that hard and finishing at that time and having such a struggle and, and uh, in the Tour de France in the past um, and then coming back and, and getting those stage wins and the green jersey, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's, it, it's, it's really nice to come back and do that. But it was something that I, I said a few years ago, like I had two years really bad luck in the Tour de France and I said, right, I need to come away from it, look at other Grand Tours, gain experience, get stronger, develop and come back as a better rider. And um, I did that. I grew up, I grew uh, like in my, like I, I got stronger, I, I got uh, more mature and uh, yeah, I was, I was ready for the Tour de France this year, and um, I was just um, I'm just so happy that I got this opportunity to ride it with with this team, with this support, um, and yeah, to, to, to actually finish off the job after after the team doing such an amazing job on the road the whole way. That's one of the very fascinating things about this all as well as the team, and I guess being a former teammate of Peter Sagan, who was your main competitor for this, what was that dynamic like? Uh, what was that competitive instinct that you had going uh, against Peter for the last couple of weeks? Yeah, it, 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 was, a, it was a mad one because you, you ride with these guys, for, I think I was with them six years, and um, you're used to you, you know battling on the road with them. And then all of a sudden you're riding against them, which was something quite new to me, I suppose. Um, but no, it was, it was really nice to be to be in the battle with Peter Sagan. Um, he won the jersey, I think, his seven times, um, and he's three times world champion. And to be able to bring the fight to him and to come out on top, um, I'm incredibly proud. But again, I wouldn't have done it without my team and the support that he gave me on the road. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, yeah, I, I suppose, uh, you don't really think about it too much, I suppose, when you're racing then, but, um, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just happy I came out on top and I, I really enjoyed the battle. Uh, th that support that you get given that you mentioned there, like we were obviously watching this via television alone. We obviously don't see the days that you're in the mountains. We get the notification that you have come home safely. Uh, could you paint that picture almost for us when you're high in the mountains and you know it's just about survival? Yeah, so like each stage there's a cutoff point and it goes off. When the, when the first rider crosses the line, they get the average speed and then there's a chart for whatever speed bracket they finished in, or the average speed. There's a they calculate um, like a um, uh, sorry uh, a time cut, and uh, it's just to make sure that people don't go way too easy, uh, and then they're too fresh for the next days. So you have to race to stay within the time cut every day. Um, so. Uh, so as a sprinter, that's really difficult because you're getting dropped on the climbs and then you're racing to get to the finish just to stay in the race. So even when you're not racing to win, you're racing to stay in. Um, and then it's just the whole team, they just stayed with me the whole time. 
we could have been we could have been getting dropped over 100 kilometers to go and they just they they they, they knew my capacities we have like um parameters on the on the bikes that read the, the power on the computer and they know my capacities so they they could say okay sam can ride at this for this amount of time so my whole team would stay with me ride at that pace and then they'd guide me through the whole stage and they'd calculate that i use the the least amount of energy to get inside that time cut but to get in safe um but i had the whole team support and they 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 paced me on the mountains and then uh, on the descents and on the flat, they drove it on with me in the slipstream. So it was really a battle in the mountains to keep me in the race. And then they, not only did they do that, they were then on the flats riding to make it a, a bunch sprint and then to do lead outs and then to, to to bring me bottles and food. And then, yeah, even just uh, the, the, the soigneurs on the roadsides with the feed bags and preparing the, uh, the mechanics and the, the director of sportifs in the cars with the information they give them the, in the radios. It was just, a, it was just, it's just, a, it's just a, it had a big operation and a big support crew. And a huge responsibility for you then to be the, the point man on all of that. Yeah, um, the pressure comes with it. Um, but funny enough, it's something that I've kind of had now for for quite a while, and and I suppose in one sense, yeah, the pressure it builds when you don't finish the job off. Um, you always want to finish the job off when you get that support. Um, but the, the funny thing is, the biggest pressure that came um, for me this year, and it was something kind of new to me, was I got I got some incredible support from Irish fans and people at home. Um, but it was the pressure of expectation um, that was new to me. And uh, at one point, that was almost crippling, and uh, you, you nearly lose your legs. But after a few stages, I, I got used to it. And um, yeah, I was just I, I, I really started to enjoy it. And I, I, I really want to thank everybody for the support at home in Ireland. Was that after you got the green jersey that you kind of noticed that first? I think. When I started, I think the first few stages I was pretty close, and then uh, I think things started uh, gathering more momentum in Ireland, um, and then I got the stage win, and that I think, yeah, when the tears and everything came out, I think that was the pressure as well coming out. That's really interesting because, like, uh, you know, cycling was one of those things that we all did over lockdown. The bike shops are kind of empty at the moment; they're just restocking again. Finally, like. You can just about buy a kid's bike again for the first time in six months. So uh, for you to come along at the end of this period where there are new cycle lanes all over the country and the greenways have started to become one of the few things that everybody's allowed to do because it's outdoors and you can socially distance. And then all of a sudden we have our first green jersey in three decades. Like I can see why that might be a little bit of uh, added excitement and maybe a little bit of extra pressure too. Yeah, um, it just it, it's it's all pressure, but um, I suppose this it's, it's part of the job. Um, but I'm delighted to hear that uh, the bikes are sold out in Ireland, and I'm delighted to, to see all these amazing bike paths for people to go out and be on their bikes because it's it really is a fantastic sport, and um, uh, I really encourage kids to get out on their bikes and to to really just have fun. It, it feels like getting the jersey was a, a confidence for you. Like it becomes kind of a, a shield in some ways. And then after that, you're like, okay, actually, I, you know, I, I can try and win this whole thing out. And, and that spurs on the stage win. And then after the stage win, you're kind of released into, I guess what I'm saying is it feels like we're going to see the, the coming out of you as somebody who really is 100% cresting to a peak that actually there's still more to come from you. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> uh, took so many years to get here and um, I think so often like with sprinters um, because it's more of a uh, fast switch type uh, part uh, sorry I'm sorry I'm speaking broken English because I'm speaking to foreigners the whole time <laughs> uh, so I can't even speak my mother language um, but uh, yeah um, yeah, like it, it took me so long to get here that I, I, I still hope that I, I have enough time to, 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 
to to stay on top <laughs> and to, to get more wins. But uh, but um, yeah, I think I kind of have a, a nice blend now of endurance and of speed and power. And uh, I think now there's there's a bit of confidence there. Um, and I hope that the, the uh, yeah the next few years, maybe next two or three years, that uh, I can get some some more good results. I I, ho- I hope. <laughs> are you going to the World Championships? Are you part of that true crew who are heading off to the World Championships pretty soon? So the World Championships this year has uh, an elevation of five thousand meters of climbing, and uh, I don't have the frame for that, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, as a pure uh, as a sprinter. It's just it's not possible for me to get over that and to get to the finish. I, 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 I'd be no good and I'd be just making up a number. Um, if I thought I could go there to help the likes of Eddie Dunbar, uh, Nicholas Roach, um, I, 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 Dan Martin, I, I, I would, but um, I, 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 I'd be completely useless. Um, and I know there's going to be people giving out that I'm not going there to represent Ireland, but I. I think I, I've done my best throughout my career and uh, the last months and years to represent Ireland the best way I can in, in my own in my own style. So I hope they understand that it's just not a parkour. Uh, it's just not a, a course for, a course for me. I don't think anybody's going to be giving out about you not representing Ireland well enough, Sam. I think uh, whatever you want to do is going to be fine with everybody. So what is next? And is there? Um, a, a, a much of the season left in terms of cycling that's going to be relevant to you and your talents? Um, yeah, I definitely have, have three more cla- uh, semi-classics, classics in Belgium um, next month. Um, but yeah, I could, I could kind of hear the DS talking on the team bus and I know they're kind of holding back a race program so that my head would stay in the Tour de France. Um so I'm really afraid I'm going to get a phone call the next days and say, here's that, there's some pieces on the table. <laughs> and will you get home anytime soon, do you think? I really don't know. Um, yeah, it's, it's just very hard to travel with COVID-19 now and, and the team want me to travel uh, as little as possible uh, and to stay safe. Um, um, we're, we're very lucky to get, the, to get a cycling season this year. Uh, and to get through the whole Tour de France with COVID-19. So, yeah, I, I, I really don't know when I'll be home next. Well, listen, whenever you do get home, it's going to be a huge party. The whole country was totally behind you. You were right to feel that because it was one of those things that everybody was talking about. Wherever you went, people were tuning in. It was on uh, TG Car, it was on Eurosport. So everybody got to see it and to share in it. And it's been a long time since uh, we had something as a whole country to celebrate. So, Sam, you captured the moment brilliantly. Congratulations. Thank you very much and thank you and uh, thank you for all the support from everybody at home and around. That's uh, Sam Bennett there. Did you sleep in the green jersey last night, Sam? Uh, No, it it, it, it was stink. (laughs) (laughs) Well, listen, thanks a million. Take care. Hi, cheers. Thank it's you. Uh, a busy phone, as you would expect, from um, somebody whose life has changed, Owen, uh, Im- immediately in the aftermath of that. He's going to be um, in great demand uh, in global cycling circles.